I am the host now. You're the host. You're good to go. Okay. Good evening. I'm calling the August 6, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 634. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. I am now going to call on each committee member by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Melissa Brewer. Present. Marcy Dumont, yes. Dorothy Pam. Dorothy, can you hear us? Can you speak? That's a problem. Evan Ross? Yep. George Ryan? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, Athena has left. Uh, do you have any thoughts, Paul, about what we can do about Dorothy? Oh, we can't hear you. I can try to call her. I don't know what her situation is. If you could, that would be helpful. And Athena might be doing that too. There she is. Again. We can't hear you, Dorothy. Can you hear us? Yeah, it, now it doesn't show any audio connection for her. Oh. That's horrible. Um, I am guessing that we should just go on because um, there's some likelihood that we won't be able to get her at all. Um, but can you work on that, Paul? Thank you. All right. So I'm just checking to see if there's any. There's an attendee and it's Art Keen. And um, Art, uh, if you would like to give public comment, raise your hand. Does not look like he's gonna give public comment. All right, so moving on, we'll ask at the end of the meeting also, if there's any public comment. Okay, so now we have Paul double tasking here. So, yes. So Dorothy is going to call in, but it'll take her some time because she has to write down the numbers and the codes and then that's what she's going to do now. Okay. Um, I know that she has looked at the town manager memo. So why don't um, our next item is the action item about the town manager appointments about this school building committee. And um, I think we could probably go ahead with that, uh, but I do want to make sure that Dorothy's here in order to make whatever comments she wants to make. Or... So I think we could get started with that. Okay. Um, and, and if you want to just, uh, so this is appointments of the members, the resident members of the elementary school building committee. Um, and uh, the town manager has provided a memo that's in the packet um, uh, nominating three people. Okay. Yes. So thank you. Um, so as you know, uh, you this is this committee has been before the TSO committee twice before once for the sort of required positions that are filled primarily by staff and then a second time for the three positions the two counselors and the one school committee that were that were appointed um, this is the third and last memo that you'll get and this is for the three resident members um, of the of the town and so the three names I am putting forward to you are Dwayne Chamble of 489 Market Hill Road, Phoebe Marion of 20 Western Lane, and Jonathan Salvin of 48 Linden Ridge Road. So these three members uh, all have children in the school district 
uh, all have connections or have um, been involved in our elementary schools and all bring a un unique set of skills and background to the, to the um, committee. Uh, Mr. Chambo is the out of school time coordinator for Amherst schools. He's, um, he's uh, very um, energetic and brings a fresh perspective, has a seven month old at home and has another child in the district um, and is familiar with the schools by his work and also as a parent. Um, Ms. Merriam has been at the Crocker Farm School, is very well regarded there, has served on teacher interview committees, uh, has served on the Social Justice Committee, um, and has been working on the vision statement and, uh, for the Crocker Farm School. She owns and operates two small businesses with her husband and um, was very interested in helping to diversify the schools. And I really appreciated both of them stepping up because they're uh, relatively new to volunteering in our, to being part of this type of thing. And so it was really exciting to have uh, new folks stepping forward and being part of this important committee. And the third person is Jonathan Salvin. Uh, he is an architect. He chaired the Fort River Building Committee. Uh, he's an architect with Coon Riddle. Uh, he's again has children in the district, which was one of the things I was seeking. Um, he has ex extensive experience um, in architecture, has experience with school buildings, and is uh, very familiar with the procur procurement process. He served on the design review committee for the town, and um, and so I think these are very three very strong candidates from a very rich pool of candidates. So um, we're really fortunate to have so much interest in this committee. Uh, questions from the, from the counselors. Um, can you hear me? Yes, Dorothy. I just wanted to know what the overall balance male female was. Oh. Out of the 13 members, there's four women, nine men. Mm. Well, that, that is a little troubling to me, but I mean, I'm sure they're all very good, but I, I do think it's better to have, try to seek more balance. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I, I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, one is, um, did you receive any applications from people that had expertise in net zero uh, building, school buildings, or buildings in general? Yes. And, and, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Salvin has, uh, has experience in this, um, but, uh, and, I felt like we will be, as part of our bylaw, we are going to be doing, it's going to be a net zero building. So we'll be, the architect we hire to build it, we'll have to be, we'll bring the heavy expertise into the program. So are you saying that you received an application, at least one other application from somebody who had more expertise in zero energy? building than Jonathan, Jonathan does. In residential, yes. And um, one concern I have is that Dwayne Chamble is an employee of the district. Mm -hmm. um, and we have so many other people on the committee that are employees of the district. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's feels like there are, you know, people f are more constrained when they're employed by the district to say what their own opinions are. So um, I'm just noting, I'm just ask, wondering how that factored in with you. No, I did take that into consideration because um, but I thought that the benefits he brought um, to the committee, especially with his connections to the community, were way far outweighed his um, uh, his employment by the district. Um, 
I understand what you're saying about that. I don't think that he will be um, a, a, uh, constrained by his employment. And I think it, it, he was pretty clear about making his, um, that he's an independent thinker. And really what he really identified himself as a bridge builder, as someone who went to hear um, from lots of different people as he moved through the process. I, I also have a, a concern about the the um, male female mix. That seems really unbalanced, um, and I think that there were um, a fair number of women who applied, and I guess I feel like that four nine. Uh, ratio is not, you know, was, wasn't really necessary to have it be so few women on the committee. Do you have any comments about that, Paul? Well, you know, the school committee and council had three appointments and one was a woman. Um, so I think, you know, we all sort of had a say in what this committee's um, uh, structure looks like. Um, a lot of the positions, when I look at it, are um, prescribed positions like uh, the town manager, the superintendent, the finance director, the person certified as a public purchasing agent. Um, if any of those positions were to turn over and it was, it was a different gender, then that would be that person. It would, become, it would, it would shift it. Um, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying and, and all things being equal, I'd rather have a more equal balance in terms of gender. Any other thoughts from anyone else on the, on the committee? Um, I am, I'm probably going to abstain because I just have, you know, I have some feelings about the fact that of the Male female balance and the zero energy building, um, and and actually most importantly the fact that one person works for the district um, when we have so many other employees. So I'm going to abstain. So if someone else would like to make the motion, um, please feel free. Yes, somebody else? I, I, I'm Joyce. What was that, Evan? I was going to say I'd be happy to do it, but my SharePoint wasn't working, so I didn't have the names in front of me, but it looks like George has his hand up. So. Oh, okay. Well, I can tell you what the names are. Dwayne Chamble, Phoebe Merriam, and Jonathan Sullivan. And it's for appointments for terms that last the length of the MSBA process. So I'm willing to make the motion that uh, TSO recommend uh, the town manager's appointments to the elementary school building committee uh, to wit Dwayne Shamble. Do we need the address? Thank you. Uh, Phoebe Miriam and Jonathan Salvin for terms that will last the length of the MSBA process. We have a second. A second. I don't know how this works. Do I? Uh, do I still run it? Um, <laughs> um, okay. So roll call. Um, Alyssa. I was just wondering if we were going to have other discussion um, after the motion was made. Go ahead, Alyssa. So I was just going to state that I was comfortable with the process that the town manager outlined, and I understand the concern about the male-female balance, absolutely, and the fact that we have men in so many of those already decided positions. But um, I was also not seeing Mr. Chamble's position as being, say, for example, if he was a principal of the building or if he was the assistant superintendent. So I'm seeing him as playing a different role in the schools. And so I, I'm not seeing 
uh, the level of concern that I would if he were in like a higher administrator level that felt too much like he was like the superintendent or like the financial director. I'm seeing him as being in a different position and one that puts him with that puts him in contact with parents in a very different way. And since such an important part of this role is talking to parents and families, I thought that was a really good fit. Other other comments? Um, I, I have a comment. Um, I think in terms of committees overall, um, and I may be wrong on this, but I'm, I have a sense that there are more men on than females on many committees. And I just think that we have to pay attention, more attention to this. Um, I am concerned in general about um, anyone who works for the district. I don't think it matters what level their job is. I think the lower down you are, the more careful you might feel you had to be um, because you're easier to fire. Um, I do think that's something that we have to think about as well. Um, I'm not gonna make a big issue about it, but I just think in future, we, we should look at the fact that um, we've got a lot of men making a lot of important decisions in town. And one place where women have felt they had a say was in education. And, you know, that, that's, it does bother me a little bit to have this committee, which deals with the school, to be so heavily male, although I'm sure they're all great people. Any other comments? Okay. Um, so we will go to the roll call vote. Um, Alyssa? Yes. Darcy abstain. Dorothy? Abstain. Um, Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay, so it passes three and two abstain. Um, so, um, thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul also mentioned to me at noon today that he um, is going to be providing some appointments of members of the HRC committee, Human Rights Committee, um, and I'm assuming that that's now going to get to us by the 20th, our meeting on the 20th? Okay. Um, are there, are, do we have anything else coming? Um, there are a couple out there. I just, I, uh, we have some interviews set up for next week. I can't just recall which ones Angela sort of sets up once we have a critical mass. She does the interview schedules. I think the um, ECAC reappointments, they're, they're, they need to be done too, right? Okay, I found those. Um, there's a couple couple of people that need to that have one year terms. Um, so okay, that's it for appointments. Um, moving on to the TSO review process. So I'm going to pull up our document that we uh, were looking at last time. And then we can figure out what the next step is. Wait a minute. This might take a second. Hey, there it is right there. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay. So, um, we, uh, we're looking at our review process for um, for the we had been looking at it subsequent weeks um, and last week we um, oops, we um, finalized or semi finalized at least some of the wording in step one and step two. So what we're doing is um, uh, finalizing our the review process that we're going to use to to, to um, look at measures that come before the TSO. 
Um, and last time we looked pretty closely at what we're setting up as a preliminary presentation process, which is basically just uh, coming to the committee to try to ascertain whether we're ready to go forward, uh, or not whether we're ready, but um, what we need to go forward with a topic. So um, do, does anyone have any suggestions as to whether we should go back over some of the stuff that we did the last time or whether we should just start with step three? Um, I have no way of raising my hand, but um, I, I, and I can't see your screen, but I, I'm assuming that it's, we're dealing with somewhere near the beginning of the paragraph. Um, the chair or the chair's designee will present a preliminary presentation. And um, I had a problem with that because um, I see the committee and the chair as working together. So I came up with some other words that might work. One is the chair in conjunction with the committee members um, or, um, see, I had another one that come with this pen but just that the chair and the committee, because it sounds, this, the reason I don't like this one, it sounds as if the chair either presents or the committee chair pre designates somebody to present, but that's not a really democratic committee. And I would think that, um, you know, the chair can bring up anything and then the committee talks about it. And some, t some things will be initiated by members of the committee and then we will talk about it and decide how to proceed. And then people would volunteer or the chair might ask somebody, but I think rather loose and informal so that we all feel um, as if we're working together on this. So that is why I didn't like that sentence. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on it. So I had said the chair in conjunction with the committee members um, will. Um, okay. Okay, so that's it. I'm, I've stopped. I am sympathetic to that idea, if I may speak. Um, my hand is raised, but it may not be possible to see it. Um, I like maybe wording it slightly differently, if that would be acceptable to the rest of you, along the lines of what Dorothy's suggesting. Um, perhaps the chair in consultation with the committee. Oh, great, great. Um, well, just lay it out and see what people think. Uh, they may prefer to keep the language as it is, but. Um, the chair in consultation with the committee um, shall, uh, let me see how we want to put it. The chair in consultation with the committee or the chair's designee uh, shall assist in preparing the measure for, for presentation. Is a suggestion. So I don't know if- I, I like that. I like that very much. I, I, could, I knew there were other words besides in conjunction with, and I think in consultation with uh, is really good. So it's a suggestion. Um, Dorothy and I are both sympathetic to it, but I don't know how the rest of you think. Maybe you want to leave it the way it is. Um, but that's what I would suggest. I'll take my hand down. Can I just edit this directly? Um, you certainly may. I think I have to somehow or other, does it, do I have to hit edit somewhere? If you go to review up there. Okay, yes, you go. And then you can do, yeah, track changes. Okay. All right, so um, it's changed. There's a suggestion that it's changed to the chair in consultation with the committee. Uh, shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation? Uh, I think we're going to insert the chair, uh, and we could say at the, well, I have to say, or the chair's designee, right? Because I don't think you want, and I don't think the chair wants uh, to be solely responsible for doing this. So we had the chair or the chair's designee um, in consultation with the committee um, shall be responsible for or shall assist in perhaps is better, shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation. 
is what I would suggest. Do we have objections to that or is that okay to do? Why don't you make the change and then people can look at it and decide. And then, and then read it again for me. Yeah, Thank you. Not, right, because Dorothy can't see it. So again, okay. the, the chair, right, the chair. Or the chair's designee. designee, comma, in consultation with the committee. Shall assist in preparing, the rest I think can stay, shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation. Because the presentation, in fact, may be done by someone else. It may be done by, by the sponsors, but they will assist in the preparation um, yes. by, doing the, by doing these things. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the suggestion. The chair or the chair's designee in consultation with the committee shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's, That's good. Uh, having a little trouble here. Um, Uh, okay, so yes, it's not perfectly edited here, <laughs> so, um, but you get the idea. Uh, the chair or the chair's designee in consultation with the committee shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation by those four things. Yes. Okay, and I, I'll, I'll clean that up. Um, so anything else in the, in the dark, I'm, I'm assuming that we have on that unless somebody does. Um, so I, would I would like to, if I may, again, it's hard for me to raise my hand, though I should be able to do it. Yeah, um, if, you, if you want to just raise your hand vis visually. Okay. Good. Yes, George. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a suggestion that Evan made in his original document. I don't know if people like it or not. I'm just going to throw it out there. It seems possible at, at the end of step two that the committee may feel it has all the information it needs and it can go directly to deliberation. So um, it's very unlikely that I'm not saying it's likely that it would happen, but it seems there could be situations where for whatever reason we have all the information that we feel is necessary. And so we don't need to, we can go directly to deliberation. Um, you may feel that's too much or too premature, but he had, I believe, Evan, you had that in the original, in your suggestion, um, in your version. Um, you may not want to have it now, but I thought it wasn't a bad idea. Um, we may never need it, but it gives us the option of, at, at, at the end of step two, uh, if we agree by consensus that we're ready to go to deliberation, we can go directly to deliberation. That was a suggestion. So insert something to the effect, um, uh, you know, if at the end of uh, step two, the committee feels it has sufficient information, it may proceed directly to step four. That's a thought. I don't know what people think. I don't want to, I don't want to step on toes here because I know Alyssa has her hand up, but it, I think it would be appropriate um, actually in step one, because the whole point is we don't, if at the end of step one, after the end of the preliminary, we're like, eh, we're good. We don't need a formal presentation. We're ready to move. Um, then we wouldn't even need you to need the preparation. The formal presentation. And yes, this was because I believe, although again, I'm, I'm apologize to y'all because I am having some SharePoint issues. Um, but we, we wrote this process pretty broadly. Um, and so while maybe bylaws, we definitely want a formal presentation. There may be other smaller things like goals was brought up um, earlier where we say, eh, you know, we have all the information we need. And if we don't feel like we need more, there's no need to go and have a formal presentation. So yeah, that was something I put in there, but I would, I would actually put that as step one. 
I think that I would agree with that. Um, yeah. Greg? So, so um, Alyssa, do you have a comment? I, I am not seeing anybody's hand, so if you could just, it's fine to just raise them visually. Well, we'll do the best we can. Um, I, I was just trying to understand where it fit, if it fit under both one and two, like in both cases, we could take a step off, but I think I'm understanding better that it makes a sense that it would be after step one. So it's just before step two. The other thing are just truly technical things that we're all struggling with here. This dark green khaki is nearly impossible for me to read. <laughs> totally impossible for me to read as a Zoom screen. I've got it open separately. Finally, SharePoint co cooperated with that. But it's funny how, right? It's like when people do slide decks and you never know how the color's actually going to look. Yeah, this is impossible for me to read. The only other thing I wanted to mention was in terms of any public that might be present, this document isn't in our public packet, and I don't know why. It's in our SharePoint, but it's not something the public's been able to access. So um, the town manager appointments and the agenda were in our public packet, but this was not. Yeah, I think that that was, I don't know how that happened. I, um, I don't know. I don't know how that happened, um, but clearly, my responsibility. Um, so can you see it a little bit better now? Yeah, that helps a little. I think at least about on my screen. I don't know about Alyssa. It's a little better. It's, it's a little better. I, yeah, I wasn't even attempting to do that. So <laughs> um, I, had a few, I had a few minor changes before we get through with this, but again, maybe people have some thoughts about, well, obviously we need to decide about inserting this, uh, so I apologize. We're actually trying yeah. to decide about insertion here, so we should, you know. Could someone that. explain um, why the language is necessary? Is it something that we would not be able to do anyway? I mean, is it necessary? Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about going straight to deliberation? Are you talking yeah. about the inserted words at the beginning? Did we agree? We're talking about Evan's suggestion to okay. put language in, allowing us to go directly to deliberation at the end of a preliminary presentation. Um, and I'm just asking why would it be necessary? Uh, I, can, I can speak to that, I guess since it was my suggestion. Um, I think it just provides clarity. Our, our hope with everything we're doing in this committee and every committee is that these processes will outlast this committee's tenure if we all are put on different committees in January or if we're all put on different committees in 2023 when we're all reelected. Um, uh, the hope is that anyone who uh, hasn't served on this committee could pick up the process and run with it. And in that case, I, I do think it's useful to clarify for future people that you don't always need to do a formal presentation, right? People shouldn't feel, <clears throat> excuse me, obliged to do one because they ha they, it's in the process. And so, um, you know, could we, could we essentially enact the spirit of that language without writing it in? Yeah, of course, but I do think it's nice to be able to have something in there that does clarify for us and for people who come after us um, that the formal presentation can be deemed unnecessary if the committee feels we have sufficient information. If we have sufficient um, information to um, give a, a recommendation to the council mm -hmm. to go forward with something? Yeah. So, so for example, you know, I'm thinking Southeast Street Commons, right? We did what was essentially a preliminary presentation and then we had a conversation of do we actually want to invite the developers in and we all sort of agreed, ah, we have all the information we need. We don't actually need to do something more than this. Um, and so we just went straight to deliberation whatever having what we would probably now term as a formal presentation. So I think it's just good to give ourselves that option. And it's always good, I think, to, to clarify that so that uh, I always like when things are 
clearly stated rather than um, implied. Um, yeah. I have a question here. Go ahead, Dorothy. Um, um, I thought this process was about reviewing bylaws or presenting bylaws. And I didn't think it, it was for every single decision that we make, because then I think it would be a really truthfully kind of constipated process. But I thought it was for bylaws like the wage staff, like surveillance. Um, so that's, I need that clarification before I can continue make, thinking about this, because is this supposed to be how we, we go about with every decision or vote that we make? Because I, I, I did not think that's what this was about. I mean, I didn't think it would cover the Southeast Street Common. I thought that was just, that was something we were asked to look at. We looked at, we had a vote, we made a decision. Alyssa? I'm, I'm really not being obnoxious about this, Dorothy, and I realize you can't see it, but this, this, pol this process has one of the longest titles ever. And what it says is town council committee on t blah, 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 proposed process for review of bylaws, public way requests, town council ah, policies, and then okay. plans and goals is kind of set off to the side in red um, because that was okay. just not great. The only thing it doesn't mention is town manager appointments. Okay. All right. So that's very helpful, Alyssa. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, and I, I couldn't, I can't print without internet either. Right. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really bad. So um, I guess um, I would, I would, kind of, I, I guess I feel a little bit like um, like I don't want to set up a situation where um, where if somebody on the committee wanted a formal presentation that they would not be able to, to get one, um, mm -hmm. at least a minimal one. Um, yeah. And that, that would prevent that. But it seems like there should be a way that our, our formal presentation could be minimal. Um, but to not have anything uh, seems, seems to deny the committee the ability to, you know, hear the substance of what's being put before us. Um, so I guess I have a little bit of trouble with that unless it was, you know, I could see where, where if we all agreed, if it was a unanimous agreement to, to go forward, yes, but if one member, um, disagreed, go forward, sort of like our consent agenda. Um, but I could see there, there might be plenty of situations where we'd, where we would all agree that we're, that yes, this is something we all agree that we should just recommend to the council, but we kind of have to have a reason for recommending it. And if we, <laughs> if we don't get any information, what is our reason going to be? Um, so, um, I, I don't see my hands because I'm, I can't see them. Dorothy, is your hand up? Yes, my hand is up. Uh, somewhere near the top, you can say, um, where we're talking about this is the process, blah, blah, blah. And then you could say the sense of the committee um, can decide how complete or how formal a presentation is necessary. Um, I had better words in my head, but they flew out. Um, but just some sentence at the sense of the committee, all right, you know, we're talking, we're saying, okay, we don't have to do all this for that. And as Evan says, we can go, we can go move ahead and make this presentation. There'd be no problem. Um, if somebody on the committee said, no, I think we have to look into this, then I think we'd have to stop and spend a little more time thinking it through. Other times we're going to want to do all the things because if it's a controversial issue or something new or something coming from the outside, we'd, we'd want to have this process to make sure that we don't leave something important out. But there are times when we certainly don't need this to do some actions. So some, some sentence at the appropriate place um, 
that according to the sense of the committee, um, this process could be abbreviated. Okay, George. Um, I guess I don't know really what to say. Um, it simply allows us to, uh, to move to deliberation if we feel as a group that we have enough information. If someone feels that we don't have enough information, that's something that um, we would have to discuss as a committee and come to some resolution. Um, I assume we work together as by consensus. Um, so yeah. if, if one individual simply put their feet down, put foot down or feet down and said, we have to have a formal presentation, um, I guess the group would have to figure out what to do. Um, and I guess if they really were adamant enough and hopefully could make a case for it, um, we, would, we would yield and we'd say, go ahead. But this just allows us that a possibility. I really yeah. not, I, I don't want to overthink it. Um, I guess it's conceivable that someone would want to go ahead and could not convince the rest of their colleagues. Um, so I, I don't know how to prevent that. I'm not sure we should really worry too much about it, but um, uh, hopefully we would be collegial and if, you know, we would feel like, okay, if somebody really strongly feels we have to have a formal presentation and they have at least some reasons, um, yeah. even if we don't agree with them, then I assume we would probably go to the formal presentation, but I can't guarantee that. And I don't see how we can wordsmith it such that, um, so it's just a suggestion to allow us to move more quickly in certain circumstances. And, uh, but if it's gonna get this complicated, maybe we'll just have to let it go. But I just felt that, it, you know, Evan's suggestion was a good one. And, um, uh, you know, if there is this situation that arises, hopefully we would work together and resolve it to the satisfaction of everyone. But yes, it's conceivable that it could be a vote where it's four to one. Um, I would hope that mm -hmm. would never happen. Um, yep. I think we'd all work to not have it happen, but yep. I don't see how you can phrase it so that it can guarantee that it won't ever happen, except by simply yep. saying, you must always go to a formal presentation, which is the way it reads right now. Uh, it just assumes that that's be the case for everything. This just allows you the opportunity or possibility to, to go more quickly if consensus is reached. You, we could, oh, uh, Evan, sorry. Yeah, so actually George said a lot of what I was going to say. I mean, I think that it's all, you know, Dusty said something about how can we make a recommendation if we don't have the content, but the, the premise of this is if we feel like we have sufficient content to make a recommendation, then we wouldn't move on to the formal presentation because sometimes we have the, I mean, especially again, using the Southeast Street Commons as an example, we had a lot of documentation. Um, in front of us, we had a, a good discussion in, among the committee, and then we sort of said, we don't really have any questions. It'd be a waste of our time to drag the developer in here when we don't really have any further questions. It would be, it would be a performative act more than it would be a substantive act. Um, and so I, I do like this, that option. Um, and I, I agree with what George said. I mean, we could say if by, con we, you know, we could work with it, we could say by consensus, we could say, majority vote or something like that. I, you know, I, I guess I do have some issue if, you know, Darcy's example of, well, what if one person really wants to go to a formal presentation? Well, we're, you know, we're a committee, we're supposed to work together. And so if I, I do have an issue of if four members of the committee are like, we have enough information to make a recommendation. And one person says, no, I really want a formal presentation, but can't articulate a reason why in a way that's persuasive to mm -hmm. their colleagues. Yeah then you know, we have a busy schedule. We have a lot on deck. I was looking at our bike rack the other day. Why would we devote another meeting to a formal presentation when the committee as a committee feels as though we have sufficient information? And so, um, you know, which is why I would say, you know, we could do, we could do it as a, a vote. There has to be a vote if we want. I'm trying to find my original language, but I'll yield to Alyssa. Alyssa? Well, just while you're looking for that language, I mean, exactly. So we are not, one of the whole things of this process was not trotting people in unnecessarily. And we found we didn't have to trot people in unnecessarily. And to say that one person gets to pull it off like consent calendar is exactly not what we're trying to do here. We persuade each other of 
our cause and why it matters to us and why we think we can move forward without it or can't move forward without it. And if push comes to shove and four members believe we can move forward without a formal presentation and one member has argued to no avail that they actually need a formal presentation, then the report of the TSO to the town council will be four members thought we could tell you, yes, do this, yeah. no, don't do this. The member really wanted a formal presentation. We didn't agree that was necessary. And the yeah. town council says, hey, I don't know what's wrong with you people. Why didn't you have a formal presentation? And we learn from that. But in the meantime, we're trying to save ourselves time and save petitioners time, whether those petitioners are on the town council or elsewhere. And so we're, we, we have this process that's supposed to apply to a whole bunch of different kinds of procedures. And so we're just trying to give ourselves jumping off points rather than having to say, well, we have another page of checklist we have to get through here. Let's go ahead and do it, even though we all know how we're going to vote on this. So we're just trying to prevent that from happening where we're just, I liked what Evan said about performative rather than a substantive act. <laughs> but of course, the other member or members who are not sure they agree with that would have plenty of opportunity to say, this is why I have a problem with that. Did you have something else to say, George? Well, I have, uh, I finally was able to, <laughs> I'm so proud of myself using my own computer today, but when we do this share screen, I can't, I just figured out how to get to the document that I actually had done some of this wordsmithing. So um, what I have written, at, at, at Evan is correct, it should come at the end of step um, two, right? Is that where we put it? No, at the end of step one, the language would be, at this point, the committee may decide it has sufficient information and move directly to step four. That's what I was gonna suggest. Um, so would that be a, oh, wait a minute, not there. Um, so it's- Come at the end of step uh, number um, one, after three, after four, just at the end of it, at this point, the committee may decide it has sufficient information and move directly to step four, i.e. deliberation. Um, what would people think about adding um, caveat that if, if four members of the So that it's like a little super majority, but it, um, okay. so it's basically saying if two members don't want to do that, that should be enough to get a formal presentation. But if only one, then yes, they should be able to, we should be able to go to, I'm, I'm working right now on another document that's talking all about super majorities. So I'm really into super majorities. Um, <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, what, you, what do you think about that? I think, Darcy, if two people um, are making the case that we need to move to a formal presentation, the committee would go to a formal presentation. Well, then why don't we just say that? Why don't we just say that, that, that we need four people? Uh, Darcy, I, I would like not to be that specific. Um, the, the thing that I, I reread um, Mandy Joe's um, memo to us, that, that I, I found that today before the meeting. And her point was, we don't have to do everything. We're making a recommendation to the town council. And everything's going to go to, G if it's a bylaw, it's going to go to GOL. So we don't have to do everything because it doesn't happen. Our vote doesn't make it happen. It's just, we're going to be taking it further, and then it gets done. So I, I would probably, I mean, right now we're agreeing that yes, we would do it that way. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll, we'll be, end up with being three to two. That could happen. And, um, you know, three is a majority vote. We would then take it to the town council and give the two positions. They'll figure it out. I mean, I think our aim yeah. is that when we present something that we care about to the town council, we hope that we're going to be unanimous. Okay, that's our aim because that's 
we, the, our interest is if we're going to spend time on something, we'd like to get it passed. But some, some things may be really thorny and difficult and may end up being a three to two. Um, and they don't want to make us to do more than we've done. Well, then it just goes to town council. All right. Well, that's just my thought. Can you tell me the language again? The language that I suggest is at this point. So at the end of uh, section number one, underneath four, underneath four, at this point, the committee may decide it has sufficient information and move directly to step four. Okay. It has some sufficient information. And, and move directly to step four. Now, I didn't have Evan's language in front of me when I did this. He may have a better way of expressing it, but um, uh, that was, you know, what I suggest. Um, simple statement, um, and that's that. Two to step four, right? right? Uh, no, and no, just and move. May decide it has a. Sufficient information and move directly to step four. Okay. So the, that's my suggestion. Yeah. Evan? The only thing that was different in my language that's sort of substantively different is I had um, they vote to move. And so it, just stipulating that it was a vote of the committee and not just like a, we good, we good. Okay, cool. Good. Uh, but okay. that doesn't have to be there, but it. But it sounds like actually from our conversation that we might want it to be a vote because um, that, yeah. that's better for the report. Yep, yep, I agree. Good, I have no problem with that. May, so vote, may vote to decide? Uh, may it, vote that it has. Uh, well, no, it would be uh, um, may decide it has sufficient information and, and vote. Thanks. So it's vote two in front of the Yes. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, now, Darcy, I'm sorry to interrupt. I have two more small suggestions now that I have this document in front of me for what lies above us. And then I'm ha perfectly happy with everything that we have here up through step, uh, till we get step three. Actually, I'm happy with step three, four and five and six myself, but I do have small suggestions if people can bear with me for the top for the top portion. Um, first of all, we have plans and goals. I think we just need to decide if we want them in there or not. Right now it's red, which means it hasn't been agreed upon. Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of, you know, I can live with it. I'm not quite sure what it all means. I know someone would come to us for, for our plans and goals, but we can leave it in. I don't, you know, but we just need to agree or disagree. Do we want to leave it in or take it out? I would probably take it out, but I'm perfectly happy to leave it in if people think that someday uh, or maybe they can think of good examples where someone will come to TSO and say, we've got some plans we want you to look at, or we've got some goals we want you to look at. Seems to me what we deal with essentially are bylaws, public ways requests, and the potential policies of the town council. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't have plans and goals, but I'm open to leaving it in if people want it. But we need to decide. I think that eventually, um, at least Lynn has mentioned this to me before, that when eventually we have a climate action plan um that that it will be it probably will be subdivided among the different town committees for us to look at um so i think that is that's a one one example of, of but that's down the road that'll be quite a ways uh but it's an example um So this is a Dorothy stupid question for the moment. So climate action thing would be called a goal or a plan. It wouldn't be a bylaw. Uh, it to start with, it will be a climate action plan, and it will have a lot of different pieces to it. Um, uh -huh. And some of them might have to do with zoning. Some of them might have to do with. Yeah transportation, um, some of them might have to do with buildings. And so they'll probably get 
farmed out to the different committees because it's going to be probably a fairly big plan. Uh, right. this, this is at least what Lynn has told me that she thinks might happen. Um, so, but again, that will be quite a long ways down the road. Um, but it's still... Well, if that, given that explanation, I can see keeping it there. It's not our little plans and goals, okay? Which is why I thought that was weird there. So sure. given your explanation, I would say let's keep it. Uh, I want it gone. Sorry. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm really I struggling. I want it gone. With, yeah. Um, we deal with policies, re uh, public ways requests, and bylaws. And, and whatever they come up with, in the end, it should turn into either a policy, a yes. public way request, or a bylaw. And we're not, you okay. know, it's their plan, not ours. But we're, so we're not going <laughs> to come back and say, you need to change your plan. We, you know, tell us, right. you've got a plan, now what do you want to do? You, oh, we want to change a bylaw. We want to make, a, you know, whatever. Then of the three things we have here, it seems that's what we deal with. I'm really struggling with what, how we would be sending something back to the town council on some <laughs> other committee's plans or somebody else's goals, uh, unless they actually lead to a bylaw change a, a, or a town council policy that somehow requires our input, um, I, I I don't know. I'm just struggling with why this is here. Well, okay, you have can, you have convinced me. Go ahead, Dorothy. I said his argument it convinced me. I just needed to know how the words all fitted together, and I think that so now I know. Okay. We, we're going to do a bylaw or, or policy. Policy would cover what the word plan had covered. And I think that that's, that's better. So, um, so I think so that, that if, if we look at the preamble right, right. Uh, and what, um, what we are doing as a committee, yeah. um, it would cover those um, climate action plans. So how... If they come to our committee, uh, how? We're what, not going to support the whole uh, plan. As George, as a, we're going to do a little piece here or a little piece there. Yeah. That'll be either a bylaw or a policy. I assume they're going to ask us to be you know, looking at some absolute, some recommendation that affects the provision of town services. Um, and that's what we would weigh, if we were asked to, we'd weigh in on that. Right? And not a plan. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's. It is actually a climate action plan. But right. we don't but, do but it. We don't. Yeah, we don't do it. What do you mean we don't do it? <sighs> We're not going to enforce the climate action plan. Right. We yeah. would do little things that they asked us to do that were specific. So I guess what Darcy's imagining is that there's this plan that's been created and a portion of it somehow affects. Uh, the provision of town services and the council for some reason, um, perhaps reasonably, wants TSO to weigh in on that portion of the plan mm -hmm. with right. our sort of advice or counsel. Um, I guess one could imagine that. Um, it's not actually a bylaw. It's not actually a public ways request. And it's not, I guess, not actually a policy. Um, they could ask for our opinion. Um, I'm not sure that, that we need to have that. Mm in this first header uh, because you can still, it seems we can yeah. still, let, we can still tell them what we think. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know. Well, so I, don't. I, I totally think if they came to us and said, only um, electric buses can be bought by the school district, that's a specific thing and that would be a policy. So we're, cause we're not gonna be dealing with the whole plan, but little pieces that affect town services we would have to go through and check it out. We do cost and we check other towns and we do all those things. And then if we decide, yes, we're going to do it, we would then present it as a policy to the town council. Is, does that make, make sense? So I don't think we need plan because it's not our plan. Alyssa, it might be the council. I'm sorry. It's not yes, okay. sorry, Dorothy. All right, um, thank you, Dorothy. Alyssa? What Dorothy said. It's not our plan. We're not going to be asked to weigh in on the plan. We're going to be asked, as George indicated, to weigh in on specific pieces of things that are under our purview. If for whatever bizarre reason, a majority of the town council says, just look at page 75 of the plan, see what you think. We don't need to run it through this process. 
because it's just a separate thing. So let's not confuse ourselves. Let's just take it out of the title. Yeah, yeah. And if something weird comes up, we'll deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Because my other point is that this document does also does not address, nor should it address, um, town manager appointments or department head appointments. And so this is a very specific document dealing with very specific things. So I think, again, I would make the case we take it out because it, it, and if we have to deal with some unusual event in the future, we'll deal with it. But this is very specific to those three kinds of things. And that's also why my next suggestion is a little bit down below. We have an example of where we're using, we don't use examples except in one case. I'd like to take the examples out, but the one example that's used to illustrate the point is actually a town manager or department head appointment and which document has nothing to do with either of that. So that's another small change I'd like to suggest, but um, so, and then I'll shut up, I'm sorry. You're being helpful. Evan? No, I, I mean, Evan? So um, my, uh, my level of investment in this is pretty low, but w what I will say, because uh, I could go either way on this, but what I, what I will say is my, my original suggestion, which I know was uh, rejected last time, but I'm bringing it up again, is to simplify this and just say, for review of measures. And I know I the thing before was people said, I hate the word measures, it doesn't mean anything. But actually, to me, that's actually the point is it capsule, it captures anything that might be referred to us. And we could put a little asterisk there that says below, excluding town manager appointments or something like that. But I, I hear I hear what George and Dorothy and, uh, and Alyssa are saying. I also hear what Darcy's saying, which is, well, something could be referred to us that is a plan. And if it's referred to us by the council, we have to act on it. And what I, what I like about what we just did before was that we gave ourselves the ability to basically do a short preliminary presentation and then say, okay, we're good. We're not going to run through the whole process. And so I actually prefer just saying, look, this process applies to everything that's referred to us except for town manager appointments. And then once we do the preliminary, if it's something little like they want us to give feedback on page 75 of the climate action plan, we do the preliminary and we go, all right, we have enough information. Here's our feedback. Um, I agree with that. George? I can live with it. I mean, just for review of measures and then you know, down below, just to uh, have a footnote, um, either laying out what, such as, for example, or you could just say exclusive of, I don't really care. Um, so that, you know, that is okay by me for review of measures. Of, uh, are we going that's to- just it, you just, you stop there for review of measures. And then down below you, somewhere you have a footnote that explains or just points out what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean town manager appointments. And uh, you could also say measures such as, you know, if you want, or you could just leave it let vague. Um, I like the mention of bylaws, public ways requests, and town council policies, because these are real concrete things that, that actually this is supposed to help us with. Um, measures is obviously less specific, nothing wrong with it. Um, so I can live with it, um, but I don't know how others feel. Alyssa? There is everything wrong with it. Measures doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have a plain English meaning. It's not defined in our rules. It's a garbage term in the charter that didn't belong in there in the first place because it's all encompassing. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't help town councilors who wanna know which committee to bring something to. It doesn't help members of the public who wanna know which committee to bring something to. If something other than the very specific words we already had, which were review of bylaws, public way requests, and town council policies. If we get anything that isn't one of those things, we are going to need to decide what to do with it. And that's exactly as it should be. Town manager appointments, we probably need a separate page like this for those. For weirdo junk things we've never seen, but we might mythically see at some point in the future, do not belong being covered in a process that is very specific for bylaws, public way requests and town council policies. If we start getting weird random things, we may need a separate process for that because why would we get weird random things? Please don't put measures in here. Please don't put an asterisk in here. Let this be clear to everybody. These are the three kinds of things we do. 
Very conceivably, I'll leave the list in and then add and other measures. Oh, God, exactly wrong. No, there is no such thing as another measure. There is no such thing that's coming to us. The only things that are coming to us are those three things. I don't think that's true, Eliza, but... Um, uh, it, it is true. It hasn't come to us yet, and it, we have no future to believe that it will. Well, I have hope. Um, but, George? Well, uh, <laughs> I think Alyssa has made very forcefully uh, the point uh, which I am sim have sympathy with, which is something that's clear and says something that I can understand, um, as opposed to measures, which is, you know, a, a sort of, you, you, your guess is as good as mine. So I think for the, for the sake of all of us, what I would suggest is dropping plans and goals and, and ending it with town council policies. By the way, is it public way request or public ways request? Anyone know? Does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, my yeah. suggestion is drop plan, it is with an S? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. It's just public way request. Yeah, pretty sure. Okay, well, let's, so take out the S, get out plans and goals, and let's get moving. Um, because I have one other suggestion I'd like to make. That's my suggestion. Great. Dorothy, do you have an opinion about that? I'm, I'm fine with the conversation. <laughs> I take that as endorsing my position. <laughs> yes, um, I don't want to put measures. I don't want to get nuclear freeze measures. I want to keep it specific to our um, charge. Okay. All right. So you don't like measures, and you you are okay with dropping plans and goals? Yes. Okay. So it sounds like there's as long three, as we said least. policies. Did we include yeah, policies? Yeah, policies are still there. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I have one other small change I'd like to make, but at first, I just guess I need to ask the chair if she feels like that's a consensus or if she wants more discussion. Um, I would uh, vote against that. Um, so maybe we should have a motion. Well, again, Darcy, what you would prefer to have just measures? Is that you're kind of sympathetic to Evan's suggestion? Is that what you're saying? Well, actually, three of us agreed on that. Well, uh, we, okay, well, we can go to a vote then, yeah. And, um, uh, but I would actually prefer to say, to have the list and say, and other measures, um, just to, to, make, to make it, um, you know, um, open to other things, such as the climate action plan pieces of it coming to us. That's not coming to us. The climate action plan is not coming to us as a plan. That's never going to happen. What's going to come to us is the parts of the climate action plan like Dorothy gave the example of. Right, but what do they fall under here? Their bylaw, their under a bylaw or a policy. Right. Like yeah. the buses would be a policy. Right, right. And, I, and so I think it's not that we wouldn't, right, so. I don't think they are policies, but um, well, they're not measures because measures are not measures. No, no. what kind of buses to have is not a measure. It's right. policy. Right. Yeah, so. they're all measures. They're all measures. I think Darcy, there's there's at least three votes to um, to leave this without the addition that you're suggesting, and maybe four, but at least three. Um, and plans and goals um, would then be dropped, and we change the ways to way. <laughs> is what I'm hearing. Uh, but people can weigh in here and say, no, no, they uh, disagree with that or they have some other suggestion. But I'm hearing three uh, individuals who want to uh, just stop after policies. Okay, why don't you make that motion, George? All right, um, I move that uh, we delete the phrase plans and goals and that we change ways to way. Is there a second? second? Thank yeah. you. There's a second. second. Any further discussion? Roll Total call. silence. Good. So. Melissa. <laughs> Aye. Darcy. No. Dorothy. Yes. Uh, Evan. No. George. Yes. Okay. Um. So that's three, two for a minute taker who is probably really confused now. <laughs>
Well, yeah. I think more important is the document now reads plans and goals is done and ways is way. If you could make those changes, that would be great. I did. They're crossed out. You just can't I, see it. That's right. I apologize. Um, You're absolutely right. I'm looking at my document now and I'm terrified if I move, I won't be able to see my document. So Okay. I um, like that step one is labeled preliminary presentation of measure. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. So please strike. <laughs> I don't know who's laughing, but is that Dorothy? <laughs> Yeah. That should oh, definitely go out. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Thank so, you. Um, Strike of a measure. <laughs> shall we start on step three now? Uh, do, I, uh, bear with me. I'm sorry, but under two timing issues, I would like to strike the two examples. Certainly the first example, town manager appointments to multiple member bodies versus department heads. This document has nothing to do with that. So that example shouldn't be there. Where um, are you? Where are you, George? Under step one, number two, A. So when will the town council action be needed in order to comply with the charter, with MGL, or with town council referral vote? Question mark. I would end it there and just drop the examples. I um, agree with that totally. Is, is that good with everybody? Yes. Yeah. Um, everybody. <laughs> that was... That was in my initial version, FYI. No, that's, that's fine. That's, uh, um, sorry, I'm lost. Where are we? We're Which under a step one. Step one. Number two. Number two. Letter, sub, letter A begins yes. when will town council. And it's the only item that has examples, A, which I think shouldn't, and B, the first example is an example of something that this document doesn't even deal with. Right. And so, are, are we leaving in lead time? I was going to strike it all, just on the okay. grounds that we don't offer examples elsewhere. Okay, so it's so, more conversational background than it is necessary to have in the process. That's my so thought. So we knew yes. what it meant. Okay. That's my thought. All right. Okay. All right, that's all I have to say. And then I was happy with the rest of this document, um, except, uh, yeah, down at the bottom, yeah, happy with the rest of it. Uh, I, will, I will mention here that, that um, Mandy Joe did mention um, how much research you're going to put in at this level. We have to put in on best practices in other cities. Um, and to kind of like pull back a little bit. I, was, I thought that was a re some reasonable points there. Um, we're making a preliminary presentation to ourselves. We're going to vote. And then what, as a result of that, we're going to make some kind of presentation to the town council. They're going to talk and then they're going to vote. Um, and if they decide we need to check in some more stuff, then we would do that. But I don't, I, I don't like it to be this arduous research process where it sounds like you say you've got a clerk who's going to be checking out all the things. And so you, then somebody says, well, you didn't check this city. I checked that city. And I, I just think that's getting very burdensome. Well, again, my thought is this is at the uh, uh, with co in consultation with the committee. So if the committee says we really do need to do this, then I guess somebody's going to have to do it. It also reads yeah. in some cases. So it doesn't mm -hmm. say in all cases, it just says in some cases Good. seeking input on best practices. But even that is, is contingent upon the committee agreeing to it. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think we have to worry about it. Not required. Alyssa? I'm sorry, my hand must be up from before. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, are we ready to move on to step three? I am. So, yeah, I think most of the rest of it is pretty boilerplate. Um, so let's just read step three. Seems pretty straightforward. Any objections? Can you see it, Dorothy? No, I can't. 
Uh, so it's a, the formal presentation. The sponsor shall be invited to make a formal presentation to the committee. At this presentation, the committee may ask questions of the sponsors and if, if deemed necessary, ask for further information or input. Yeah, that sounds great. Step four, deliberation. I guess one question, uh, perhaps apropos of what Evan mentioned earlier, do we want to say, and, and the committee has voted that it has sufficient information, do we need to vote at this stage? Um, is that something people feel we need to, to say here, um, or do we do by consensus? So once, what it reads, Dorothy, is once all presentations are complete and the committee has determined that it has sufficient information, it may proceed to deliberation. And then the committee may either employ the CIBD um, or both the CIBD and SMART rubrics. The question is, do we want to have a vote here? Is that something we should require? Um, or is, we already have enough votes in this document as it is, but do we want to vote um, here? I, I, don't think, consensus? I don't think we need to require the vote. I think if we feel there should be one, we will ask for one. But in okay. most cases, by that point, we should be at consensus. So I don't want to rule out the fact that somebody may call for a vote, but I don't think we have to require a vote. Okay. And I think it says may, it doesn't say shall. Um, and that um, gives a little flexibility and leeway um, to the chair and the, or the chair's designee. Um, so, um, okay, good. To be We're not in the same space here. I'm not on the same item that you're on then. I thought we were talking about whether or not we were gonna vote under under the to commit step four deliberation sentence one and the committee and I thought George was offering to put vote in there and Dorothy was saying we don't need vote in that first sentence under step four deliberation. Is that not where we're at? That is correct. That is where we're well, at. The word may doesn't so. Oh, no, I'm talking about the second sentence. Ah, right. Well, it's actually all one. It's all one sentence, but it's two clauses. So once all presentations are complete and the committee has determined that it has sufficient information, it may proceed to deliberations. Well, it's isn't it will? Sentence. Isn't it will at that, well, that point? That's, that's a good question, Alyssa, actually. Um, look. I think it probably should be will, right? Because otherwise it's like, what's our other choice? Like just to never do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that always seems to me a perfectly wonderful option. <laughs> You're right. It probably should it may be proceed, or it may just give up. <laughs> exactly. I think that's well. You know, what if, what who knows if we what will happen? Hold it over to another meeting. But, yeah. You know. um, right. It doesn't mean that we have to deliberate at that meeting. It just means we're. Yeah. And right. then, um, so. so yeah, I don't know. Are we good with this? Should we change it to will? I just did. Great. Perfect. Okay. So, Alyssa, can you not see it either? It's, I can now. I'm trying to flip between having it open big and having it open small as the actual Word document as opposed to your Zoom screen. So I can read it better. Okay. Technical difficulties, not your problem. All right. All right, so. Um, so, I, I have my hand up. Oh, sorry, Evan. Um, I, so I guess, um, I'm think uh, for as far as how we're working through this, the second sentence is actually the one that struck me a bit. Um, it says that the committee um, may employ either the CIBD or both the CIBD and SMART rubrics. And so I'm wondering if it makes sense for us to jump to those rubrics now, since we're talking about framing the deliberation in terms of those rubrics and then also I, I like the word may there because we can decide not to use either with the word may, but I just wanted to make sure that was the intention that we don't have to use these two rubrics if we don't want to. I, my, my thought is to, to have them as a guide and to, to be flexible about it, but um, that's the decision of the committee. Uh, I, I would kind of like to get through five and six and then go to it if that's okay because i just want to get through this darn thing 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> we, understand, we, we agree with you. Uh, it would be nice. Um, and uh, yes, but it is relevant, obviously. So any other comments about four before we move to five? Um, okay, so. We're gonna come back to it though, after we go over the CIB. Yeah. Yes. Smart. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah, and it's down Good. below, see? There it is. Right, but I'm saying I'm going to go back to four because I'm not sure I'm good with that language either. But okay. I'm willing to move on till we see. All right. So, um, five, the committee takes a formal vote on whether to recommend or not recommend the measure upon which it has deliberated. Again, I just language here. I wonder, uh, again, those of you who are much more sensitive uh, users of the English language, um, one would perhaps expect shall take a formal vote um, or will take. Uh, God help me with the difference here. But um, we, we've been using the future would seem to be we want to something like that. The committee shall take or will take a formal vote. Which do you um, prefer? I like shall. but. Um, don't ask me to defend it. Evan, you're, you're the master of English here. Do you, can you enlighten us or do you prefer to remain silent? Honestly, just for consistency's sake, it should be the committee shall take. Right. All right, that's good. Right, and um, that, um, that also suggests we should probably change will to shall above and for, um, shall proceed to deliberation. So I want to ask a question here. Yeah. Um, to me, shall, I may be totally wrong, but just as I'm listening to it tonight, shall, will is very strong. You will do it. Shall says, yeah, you're probably going to do it. You can do it. You very well may do it. And maybe you should do it, but it's not as strong as will. So I guess I like shall because I feel it's just a little bit more flexible. Well, you're not going to hear any complaints from me, um, but that suggests changing shall up above, but or will to shall. But um, we're going to come back to four anyway. I think Alyssa wants us to go back there. Um, okay, so um, we're good with five. So five shall take a formal vote. Okay, good. And then okay. six. Six, uh, report to town council. Are you listening, Dorothy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. After deliberation and vote, the chair shall report the result of the committee's action to the town council, including the outcome of the vote, the vote tally, and a summary of the reason for the committee's recommendation. If the vote is not unanimous, and the, the report shall include a summary of the minority views or a minority report if requested. Okay, a couple of little typos. Uh, I would, t first of all, there's no apostrophe. Is there actually, there is a apostrophe. It is the committee's recommendation, isn't it? I apologize. I mean, I, I would insert the, of the reasons for the committee's recommendation. And then the apostrophe is correct, sorry. Was that a suggestion, George? Well, I think it's just, I think English would, I, what we have right now is, and a summary of the reasons for committee's recommendation. English would normally ask for a the, for the committee's recommendation. Or oh, the, okay. yeah. Right, so just insert I agree. the, right, just English. Um, the sound of sense. Otherwise, I have no problems with it. Okay, all right. So I'll take this out here. Um, and, um, Okay. Have we deleted the foot? There's a footnote here. I'm no, sorry. We're not as far as the footnote yet, George. Yeah, hold on. I, I have, have my hand up. Okay. No way. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, this looks good, except, especially because this language largely tracks our town council rules, with one small addition where it says summary of the minority views or a minority report. Uh, yeah. I will not vote for this process if it says or a minority report. The report, there's always one report. Every committee has one report which summarizes minority views, but um, we're, I, I don't support giving an option of a completely separate report that represents the minority report. Uh -huh. Right, we've been through this before. I, I understand your point, um, and I, don't, I have no problem with that. 
Okay. I um, I believe that our rules allow that, and that th what it is saying here is that if a minority report is requested, it can be part of the report. No. 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 No is it is allowed in our rules. Our, That's our, our rules never say anything about a minority report. Yeah, they do. They do they, actually mention report. minority reports and they mi minority opinion. They say minority um, views. They don't say right. anything about a separate report. Exactly. Right. right, but they don't they don't say that we can't have minority reports. So, um uh, if I'm we not, have to have a vote on this, then we'll have a vote. But and that's unbelievably crazy, in my opinion. That people okay. Well, well Darcy, let, let let me give another position here. Um, the phrase "minority report" is a very strong phrase, and it it casts even if a minority is in fact less than majority because it's a minority report, it casts it almost on equal terms with the majority report. So as long as the report, the report from the committee, includes the minority views fairly, I think that that is fine. But to call, to have a separate minority report, I think leads towards divisiveness and taking sides. And we do that enough without anyone telling us how to do it. So I don't think we need to, I think I'd like to go for the kinder, gentler one, as long as we understand that the minority views will be fairly represented in the committee report. If I may. Um, George. Thank you. Um, also remember that um, every counselor has the opportunity to speak at length at the council meeting on their views. So in addition to having the minority view expressed in the report, uh, the counselor or counselors are free to speak during council uh, deliberation. Uh, either elaborating on those views or revising them, whatever. So it's not, um, I, I think I prefer uh, Evan's suggestion of simply the, the report shall include a summary of the minority views, period, and strike for a minority report if requested, because it does in fact reflect our practice and our rules, though it is not explicitly disallowed by our rules, um, our rules don't really reflect it. And secondly, um, the counselor or counselors are perfectly free and should speak uh, in council um, in defense of their views, in addition to having their views expressed correctly and accurately um, in the report of the committee. So we have a practice of committee reports. We do not have a practice of committee reports and minority reports, and that practice includes the uh, inclusion of minority views. And I think all good shares um, run that by the minority before they actually submit it. So they, they say, here's what I'm planning to write um, and uh, check with the minority to make sure that it reflects their views accurately. So um, I actually do think Evan's suggestion is a good one um, that we stop after minority, at, at, the, at the word views, period. Alyssa? Um, the only thing I have to add that's slightly more specific is our rules specifically say exactly what everyone has just said other than the minority report, which is that report shall include blah, 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 pros and cons relating to any proposed action, minority views, comma, a record of any votes taken, blah, blah, blah. So I think minority views has worked extremely well for the town council thus far. It has been very frustrating for everyone when there have been separate minority reports. And we have to work together, absolutely, as a committee to say our reports need to accurately reflect what the minority views were in any given circumstance, because there could be a whole bunch of different reasons for them. But as I have just expressed numerous times before, it is not appropriate to have a separate minority report as a separate report. Now that doesn't mean that verbally somebody can't say, could somebody at somebody at town council say, 
even if like the minority person doesn't say why they want felt that way another town counselor just like at town meeting could say i know it says the minority views were this but could somebody tell me more about that absolutely like george said the minority views could have both express themselves at the town council meeting and the town councilors could ask for more information absolutely it's just that it's one report because it represents what the committee did together if you if one was going to go down a road of having a separate minority report to feel like you got to write your own report then that means the majority reviews each get to write their own report too because they each get to say exactly why they voted yes on everything and then you just have a huge mess so i think minority views and we hold each other to the standard that we expect that it will represent the minority views I just want to say that the reason that that's in here is because I had um, advice from other committee chairs, including Mandy Jo, who does have the practice of allowing um, the minority to write their own piece, a minority report within the, within the committee report, which is where it would be. And um, so I find it extremely undemocratic for the majority people in the council to want to squash the minority views. It's, I find it crazy. And, and no one is trying to do that. The chair is the one writing the report. And if the chair is in the majority or the minority, the chair is responsible for summarizing both majority and minority views no one's trying to silence anyone well it's absolutely. Just, I, I have a second just because you disagree doesn't mean you can call it undemocratic it's just no, it's make sure that both views are represented it's incumbent on the chair to do that it has nothing to do with the majority it has to do with democracy it has to do the chair should be offering the minority person the ability to write a minority report but i can see that four people are in the majority and they want to Wash the minority view, so why don't we have a vote? Um, I mean, uh, listen, Darcy, I want to say something. Um, you, you kind of mischaracterized what was said just then. And um, when you talked about a good chair, of course, ask the people who are in the minority what their, what their thoughts were, and in fact, runs the language by them. And that re is included in the report. Um, so it's, it's not about allowing the majority to shut out the minority. But the reason I don't like the separate minority report is that it polarizes situations that don't need to be polarized. We have many things about which we, we really do have opposing views, but lots of things we can agree more or less, but still have some minority opinions. And as long as those opinions are included in the report, it's just, it's democratic and it's a much, much better way to go forward. Um, so I don't want it to make it act like there's always sides on everything. Um, there are many times when there are sides, but on everything there aren't. So I'd hate to have it so that we're just constantly polarizing ourselves with our separate reports. But I do agree that a good chair will run the language by the people who had voted the other way, voted in the minority, and that they have a chance to look at the language and approve the language. And I believe that is the practice in most committees um, of the council. So it's, it's not yeah. like yeah. they're being squashed everywhere. Mandy Joe asks the minority if they want to write the minority report. I, I will say, was I it, serve, was it I in serve on the, CRC. Was, <laughs> I've been in the minority on CRC. I have never once been asked to write the minority views. Mandy Jo has summarized my views in the report. So well, I don't know if she has done that on occasion, on but when I have been in a minority on CRC, I have not been asked to write my own report. Mandy Jo has done a wonderful job as chair summarizing my minority viewpoints. And so right. I don't think that's a practice that's done all the time. So. But, but it no, is, no, I was, it is the, a practice. She, we did not have separate minority reports, but when you said she asked them for the words, they were put in the, the general report of the committee where I believe they're stronger. So, well, anyway, uh, why don't we have a, someone make a motion and so that we can... So with, with the chair's permission, I will make a motion and the motion would be to strike the phrase or a minority report, comma, if requested at the end of step six.
I will second that. Okay, any discussion? Um, uh, roll call vote, Alyssa? Yes. Darcy, no. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay. All right, so going back to number four, um, Evan just suggested that we look at the um, rubrics um, and uh, so here they are. They're, they're almost verbatim what was sent by CRC other than changing the, the um, TRC to TSO. Um, and so we have A is the, is the um, community impacts, benefits, and drawbacks review process. And B is the SMART process. So um, I was really, really hoping that rather than words, if we were going to, if we're going to be flexible and just use it as a guide and not make it mandatory, um, I was really hoping that we wouldn't have to go through it line by line <laughs> to, to wordsmith it, um, but rather just adopt it as a guideline that isn't, that is um, optional. I think that's that's a reasonable request, uh, as long as as long as it's clear that the language doesn't say that we have to do every one of those things. Right. But. It's it's just kind of like a checklist. If we have some topic in front of us that has broad based um, community interest, this would be something we could look at to say, oh, sh we shouldn't forget this or that. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, other th thoughts, Alyssa? So I agree with not trying to reword Smith those two processes. I would like to make the following two comments. One is to back up one sentence at the end of the first sentence in step four, which is titled deliberation. The word deliberation at the end of the sentence should not be capitalized because it is never capitalized again. Then in the second sentence, I'm just a little nervous about the wording where it says, the committee may employ either or both. It doesn't give us the choice of throwing them both out the window. And so I know the first word is may, but if we want to throw them both out of the window, then I don't think that may is giving us eat that option. Now, I don't know under what circumstances we might want to throw them out the window, but I can see an applicant of some kind coming to us and saying, you have to one of these because it says you will. You'll either use one or you'll use both. And if we say, you know what, this is such a different situation, we don't even need to do that. We just think it's awesome. Um, I, I don't, where does that leave us? Are we, do, when we say may, are we really saying we could use these or not? Or are we actually saying we either have to use one or we have to use both? There is no third choice. I just want us to be clear on what we're telling people we're going to do. Um, George. I think Alyssa raises a very good question to which um, I'm not sure I have a very clear answer. I guess part of me feels like these are useful tools which we may choose to employ or we may not choose to employ. It's up to us. But if the language is taken to mean we must employ one or the other or both, then I have a problem. Um, I think in most cases we'll probably, I mean, I have a problem with the whole thing. I think the language, the wording is just you know, but we're not going to get into that. We'll leave that aside. Um, I, the, the deeper question is, must we use one or the other, or is it simply these are tools we can choose to use if we wish? I prefer the latter. Yeah, we could just say they choose to employ. Right, so it's an aid to your memory, you know, remind you to think, think about, does this apply? Should I do this? I mean, that's where it's useful to me. 
is just purely as a memory checklist, but I can say, no, don't have to do that one, don't have to do that one. Oh, but this is important. George, do you still have your hand up? I'm sorry, it, it should come down. I, um, please, If you can take it down, please do so. Um, I'm re resorting to simply raising my hand or just bullying my way in, which I apologize for. Because at the moment, I can't, uh, let me see if I can get back in. Um, so are we okay with that? The committee may choose to employ either the CIBD or both, the, both of the processes guiding its review, in guiding its review. Um, honestly, I still think that has the same problem, no, but, but I'll refer it. I don't know no, if I'm Evan not. has a better way of phrasing it because I, I agree. I, I think I'm in agreement with people that we might decide we actually don't want to be agree. Agree. But See, I think I'm in agreement that we do. I mean, I believe I'm hearing agreement that we may, for whatever reason, choose not to use either one of these, but I'm not sure that may choose or may really solves the problem of the way that reads in English. So maybe Evan or Dorothy has a better phrase. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back there. 15 huge trucks just came in front of my house. It may be Eversource to restore the power. <gasps> I don't know. Yay. Well, we hope so, but we there, hope so. so. There were like so many huge trucks and police blocking things off. I didn't know if, because we haven't figured out who's supposed to get rid of the cut down my big tree um, uh, next door, whether it's Chiwadi's insurance or my insurance. So I thought maybe they can get the tree, which I kind of didn't want them to do in the dark of the night. But I think it's power. So that's good. Okay, so I'm back and I was listening to everything and it sounded all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it did. I was, I was agreeing with everything you guys were saying. So. Okay, Optional. So are, we, uh, are we okay with that language in four? Um, Can you read I, it? I think it's, it is hard. It's just a verb. I just, I don't think it's a verb. That, that that is mandatory. You know, it's, 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 if it's, it's saying may choose to employ. Um, so, um, I think we might be done. I, I what about a... saying may, may, may uh, find these processes useful? Ooh, I like that. You know, because it's a little weaker than employ, um, and yet that's what they're there for, to make us to think and say, oh yeah, is this, is this, you know, like on SMART, is this specific enough and all that, but SMART is easier for me than the other one. The other one, uh, you have to decide whether it's relevant to what you're doing, to, whether you're gonna do it, but it's good to have the list there so you can not have to create it yourself. Alyssa? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I agree totally with the sentiment and I know you're trying to express it too, Darcy, and we're all trying to come up with words. I appreciate what Dorothy just said because it's there as a guide for us. What I'm trying to avoid, right, is I'm trying to look at it from the negative standpoint because that's so easy mm -hmm. for me. And I'm looking at an, somebody comes to us and asks us to review something and we get to this point and we make various decisions, but we don't actually fill out like a chart with all those things on the yeah. rubric and they say, you didn't mm -hmm. follow your own process. And like, I, I don't want to have that fight. I don't either. I, d I don't think anyone could say that if it says that it's not mandatory that we do it. Um, so I guess, I think that's pretty, pretty loose language. Um, Evan? So actually, um, I, I think that the language provides us enough flexibility. I, I actually, we kind of, we looked at the rubric and then we said, we're gonna use this as a guide so we don't have to talk about it. And then we stopped talking about it, which I'm not actually not comfortable with. And the reason for that is um, we sort of just took the rubric that CRC had and just said, we're gonna use this but we're very different committees and we have very different scopes and, and, and areas of focus. And so I, I'm trying to look at them. Also, I'm noticing that the, the one that CRC sent us is slightly different than the one that's on this. So I don't know where those changes came in. 
um, cause I don't see like a track changes, but I noticed there are differences between what CRC sent and what we have in front of us. Um, and I literally can't track where they came from. Um, but the other thing is, you know, this talks about things that are within the jurisdiction of CRC, right? I mean, this is literally designed for CRC by CRC. And I guess I'm, I'm, I, I would appreciate a discussion about whether this is actually relevant to us and if it includes things that we want to. So for example, the main purpose that we, the main reason we exist and the main reason we get things is measures that may affect the provision of town services. And yet nothing in this rubric even touches necessarily on the operation of departments or the provision of services. So I guess I'm, we sort of just took this and said, yeah, yeah let's go for it. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, a lot of these are really outside the scope of this committee and maybe we still want to consider them, but it, I think it's worth having a discussion. And then on the other side of it is there's nothing in here that actually touches on with the exception of transportation, because that was sort of moved to our charge. I think after CRC had developed this, um, that actually really gets at what's unique about our charge, which is the departments themselves. Um, so I, I, I guess- Well, the health, the health and welfare and well-being of the town, you know, as opposed to maybe historical, cultural, um, and all that stuff. But I, I'm thinking it's 820, okay. I'm thinking that your point is really good. Um, I, I, I kind of thought those were the things left over from that committee, I forgot the name of it, that wanted to, the, the citizens committee that wanted to kind of do this with all of our, our measures. I don't think CRC invented it. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe we need to spend some time and then send things into Darcy of proposed language that really relates to town services and outreach, which we keep forgetting, mm -hmm. but I don't really feel like doing it tonight, but I will if you want to, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm game if you want to, but I just thought maybe my brain would work better earlier in the morning. Yeah, I, I would propose that we um, stop here for today. And um, at some point we need to vote on the review process, but you may, I don't know if you want to vote on it before we uh, figure out the outreach, stakeholder outreach document. Um, but I am glad that we got through the review document and um, I do kind of want to look very briefly at our work plan before we, um, before we adjourn today. Um, are we okay with um, taking this up again at the next meeting, but, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can take up something substantive at the next meeting um, before we finish the outreach part of this. Um, but I would like to look at the work plan so that we can talk about it, like what, what we want to take up next. Um, and uh, Alyssa, is that a hand? Yes, we said we were going to come back to the footnote because we were trying to flip around between the sections. So the little footnote and references. So I, we just need those two sentences just gone because in our, in, because we already had this argument and because the word measure includes bylaw order resolution or other vote or proceeding adopted none of which only bylaw of these things is the only thing that applies to this committee so just take mm -hmm. these sentences out and they just go away we don't need them anymore at the bottom of six both of those just go away do do people agree with that i do yes i think they should go um, I don't mind it going because the, that definition is the craziest definition I think I've ever seen. Um, Good. So, and I, and I think the only request I would make, Darcy, if you, if you would, would be then to produce a clean version of this, um, perhaps for us to see in advance, but certainly to have us for next time. So we would have... I don't know, I guess it would have to have the track changes, but we'd like to, I'd like to see a clean version 
of, of what uh, we have done today. Uh, and hopefully we'll be ready then to, to vote on it next time. Sounds good. So, yeah, I have a question. Did we vote on some sections or are we going to delay that until we have the clean copy? We've not voted on any sections to my knowledge. Okay. All right. That's fine. I just need that clarified. So I think we we're going to vote on the entire document when it's ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do we need before it's ready, George, besides a clean copy? Um, I think there's still a question of these, of the language of these um, uh, rubrics, which I understand now are optional. So maybe we could say we could keep them separate and maybe that's wise. And we're just going to yep. vote on the process and that we could do that right now. And then um, we can come back to the uh, rubrics uh, since they're optional mm -hmm. anyway and discuss them at, at some other point. That sounds good. Do we want I, to, do I we want do to vote now on the review process? I think that might be appropriate. I don't think I could ever vote for these this rubric anyway, <laughs> given the way it's written. Yeah. Um, so I, I, as long as it stays as something we can use, and we can certainly talk about it. But if you actually asked me to vote on it, I have so many problems with it. I don't know where I would go. But um, so yes, let's let me vote on the process tonight yes. and be done with it. Um, yeah, that's good. Oh, um, but it, we don't have a clean copy in front of us, so that's the only problem. Right. Do people feel comfortable voting for it without the clean copy? Um, I, I do because I think that we were clear and um, I have a level of trust. So I think we could. Okay. Other people might I, have different opinions. Alyssa? I, yes, I agree. I agree that I trust that we have, to, we have really looked at this carefully. You weren't just saying, oh, I'll write a note about later, right? You were very carefully changing everything we talked about. And I just want to be clear that not only is that footnote coming out, but we're also taking those two rubrics out of the process. They're yes. just separate yes. documents now. And so yes. it's totally cool that they were in here while we were doing this. But when mm -hmm. we next time have the document that is the process that we're all going to vote for tonight, that then we just say those are separate documents. Those are not part of this process. Right. And we could, we could look at that at it separately, but yeah. it's not, a, it's not a if, if we're going to do that, then in step four under deliberation, we probably should strike C, C, I, B, D, and smart rubrics below. That should be stricken. Yeah. Right. right. Yes. Um, it, it's mentioned, exactly. that's fine, but we should strike that. Yep. And then I think we have a document we can actually vote on. Yep. That makes total sense. What, what are you saying to strike? In step four deliberation, you have at the moment a sentence standing alone just oh, at the see. end, C, blah, blah, blah. I think you should strike that. Um, and the language above makes it clear that these documents exist and that we may choose to employ them, but they're not actually part, well, <laughs> right, they're, they're not actually part of the formal process itself. So we're separating them out and we can talk about them separately. Okay. I, I think we can vote. Who would like to move to adopt this? I so move. Second. I wish I could show you the picture of the guy going up in the white thing up to the, up to the box. Okay. Um, I'm so excited, Dorothy. That's great. I second. Um, any additional comment? Thank you all for all the work. Uh, this has been quite a labor, but I think we've gotten to where we need to be. And uh, so we can pat ourselves on the back, but yes, I have no comments about the document. Okay, um, roll call vote, Alyssa? Aye, yes. Darcy, aye. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Aye. George? Aye. Okay, um, so we have a review process. That was a little excruciating. Yay. All right, and, and um, trust, trust me, this, this has been happening at other committees as well. This is not as easy as it looks. Yeah, um, so let's very quickly look at, we don't have minutes to um, approve tonight. They, they didn't get finished. Um, so let me just save this. That would be really bad if I lost the right. <laughs> we trust that. <laughs> um, so uh, 
let's look at our work plan for a minute um, just to see what what we think about it what's coming up let's see There, there we go. Wait a minute. Bob, that was some little armada coming down the street. Okay, tell me if you see it. Um, just a minute. Do you see the work plan? I do not at the moment. Hmm. Oh, good. Let me get yeah. here. Shrink it a bit if you could. It's a little off center. At least on my screen. Yeah, and I still still need to. Yeah, it's good. Don't undo it till it's done, Bob. Um, okay, so um, here we are on August 6th. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we have, you know, we've done a, a practice preliminary presentation of the surveillance technology bylaw. So we can do that at any time. And Paul, of course, expected to see that tonight. Oh my but, goodness, okay. That about that. But, um, so on August 20th, what we have coming up are some more appointments for the town manager. We're going to have a preliminary presentation of the public way policy that Lynn is presenting. Um, and then we can, you know, we'll have more space to do something else, like may, maybe a half an hour or to an hour, where we could either do um, the preliminary presentation of the surveillance technology bylaw, or we could do something else. I've heard that um, Dorothy and George are preparing something about parking in Lincoln Avenue. Could you give us an idea about what's happening there? Well, George and I have met, and tomorrow we meet uh, with um, Guilford and at Paul's suggestion, also um, Chief Livingston. And so we will proceed and see where we are. And um, I think, you know, barring strange things happening, we should be ready to do, uh, George, stop me if I'm wrong, a preliminary uh, presentation um, by, on the 20th. Or what do you think, George? I th certainly think we could. I think what's going to be important to us is, is the feedback from the rest of you. Um, and that you really can't give us feedback until we give you something concrete to look at. Right. Um, and That's I right. It probably won't look right. that much different from what you've seen before, but it's still valuable for us to have the discussion if, if, you, if, if it fits the agenda. So we should be ready. Uh, we will be ready uh, by the 20th to make a preliminary presentation. A preliminary, right. Yeah. Right, mainly to solicit comments from the committee. Yes, yeah. yeah. and, and questions. Give you an, and give you an idea of what we are proposing. Yeah. And then do you think that um, that a for, you could have a formal presentation? I think a lot's going to depend on the reaction of the, of the committee, the other three of you, and what you think. Uh, I think that's very, obviously, extremely important uh, on many levels. But um, some of you may wish to have a much broader discussion. Right now, we're focusing on Lincoln Avenue and that specific issue that the item actually reads DPWG parking slash Lincoln Avenue. What we're going to be presenting is Lincoln Avenue. Um, so you, there may be some uh, uh, feedback on that. Um, so we just need to hear, you need to hear what we have in mind. And then we need to hear from you what um, you feel is lacking or is needed 
um, or whether you want to go forward. Um, uh, we have to convince you as a committee that this is something right. that uh, needs to be addressed and we're going to offer you um, a proposal. Uh, so uh, that's, I think, where we'll be at is what, what the reaction is from the rest of you. Um, mm -hmm. open right. Up. Which so, maybe right, we so may go home, may go a, home and lick our wounds. Bit, <laughs> right, it's a little bit beyond Lincoln in that it includes the streets that are part connected to it. Um, uh, McClellan and Cosby coming in and going up and cheering, and whether whether there's impacts on Sunset. And we're going to be looking at the whole length of Lincoln Avenue, as the last study did. But we did do some really good discussions, and I've done some drive around. Um, to see if it was impact or tied into other streets, and it doesn't really seem to be beyond those streets. So um, we want to present it to you. We want to get your input, and we want to make it something that we all get behind, okay? Um, whatever our final product is, it should be something that the committee approves. Um, so what kind of time do you think that it will require? I think 30 minutes. I don't think we're going to know yeah. until we talk to the people tomorrow. Yeah, I think 30 minutes would be adequate. I mean, we, and also oh, you, can just, you, you can just shut us up. Um, well, answer, you know, answering right. the questions that are in the preliminary presentation is not very, I think normally it won't take that long. That's, um, that's my hope too. The, yes. the, the, our, our discussion would, might make it take longer. Um, uh -huh. So, but but the actual presentation sh usually shouldn't be oh, long. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking the. I was thinking the entire show. Um, a presentation uh, we would try to make as brief as we could. Say what, 10, 15 yep. minutes, at the most, hopefully. Shouldn't right. Uh, so, long. presentation. You mean George and me talking? We were thinking George and me talking and the committee discussing. A half an hour. We, we're, yeah, we're yeah. really interested in the committee's response. Okay, so um, if, if um, we have the public way policy and we have uh, you, are you definitely going to be ready or yes. is your meeting yes. tomorrow going to decide whether you're ready or are we, you definitely? We should, we will be ready. Okay, so um, Uh, it seems like the public way policy and the Lincoln Avenue preliminary presentation and the appointments, um, we could put the surveillance technology bylaw on as a, you know, in case we get through everything, which is unlikely. <laughs> we, and we do have to finish. We, well, are we going to discuss those, the rubrics of things we look into at that next That's meeting? Right. Are we going to? That's right. Yes. Yeah. So we have some stuff to do. Yes. Yeah, and that, that could take up some time, the rubrics, yes. Yeah, and if people have thoughts about the rubrics, in the meantime, if you could send them to me, okay. that would be good. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, otherwise, um, and are we, you know, Lincoln Avenue parking, uh, we had originally envisioned as being a much larger issue, you know. I understand, and that that may be that may be the bone of contention. I, I don't. We can't guess what are on the minds of the rest of you, um, uh, but we are coming in with a fairly focused presentation, and you may all just blow it to pieces. I don't know, but um, or you may immediately want to tell us you don't want to hear from us until we provide you with a much larger uh, uh, presentation. At that point, we still would need guidance from you because I have no idea what that means. So mm -hmm. um, uh, that's where we're at. So people right. need to speak so up. If, is, if they don't want to hear from us now, we, I guess we'll be quiet. Yeah. But we're, we're ready to give you something. Okay. This is the Lincoln Lincoln Avenue presentation. I have volunteered, and I think I have volunteered, George. And I'm not absolutely positive whether he agreed that we would, after this is done, we would then look at the whole the, the uh, uh, parking report, the downtown parking study, which um, kind of got scuttled. It's got a, a number of good points which haven't been given fair discussion, and it's a more complicated issue, um, and, but we would do that separately because in Georgians and my discussions, we felt that the two were not interlinked. 
but that we thought that the big parking issue for the further one, that we would then look at that after the Lincoln Avenue thing is done. Uh, is that still good with you, George? I'm I mean, sorry, if you don't want to do yeah, it. That, no, that, I have no problem with that. Um, I think okay. it's really right. Okay. I, I think quick questions. Yes, sorry, Alyssa. Yes. So a couple quick questions and then I think Paul might want to make an announcement if he's still here. Um, so a couple quick questions are associated with um, let's not put surveillance on just like I was really surprised to see it on today. Let's not put it on next time because I think between the rubrics, the Lincoln presentation and the town council refer on the public ways policy, we have more than enough to do. Yeah. And so just carry mm -hmm. it forward in the work plan. And then the other question I had, um, oh, and I agree with what I think where Dorothy and George were going with the Lincoln thing, maybe on the work plan, we should go ahead and separate the Lincoln and parking preliminary presentation just to show that we're not forgetting about it. It's still in the bike rack, but we've kind of right. temporarily separated them so that people don't show up thinking we're going to talk about parking over the whole world. And we're not. And the other, so, and again, with the surveillance, I don't want people to f show up and then feel sad because we didn't talk about it. But then the other thing I wanted to ask about is because knowing that open meeting law is always super tricky, what is it that Dorothy and George might be able to send us ahead of time in writing, meaning if it got posted with the meeting posting, you know, if it got attached to that, like we've been doing, um, that shouldn't be a problem, but I don't know if they really have time to do it before the 20th. I'm just saying none of us likes to walk into a meeting cold with no information. So were you planning it was purely verbal or were you planning to give us something in writing? We should certainly provide you with some kind of written material, ideally in advance, at least maps um, that you could look at. Begin. Um, and perhaps a, a, actually a written description of the proposal um, would be also appropriate. So I, I hear you, Alyssa, that um, if we are planning to make a preliminary presentation, it would be um, more than appropriate to have something for right. you to look at. And ideally, it should be posted in advance. It has to be posted mm -hmm. in advance. So um, if we don't have it, then we're going to have to just, uh, we'll do our best. Um, but yes, we, we should have something. For but, you. Okay, here's a question. We're doing a preliminary presentation to our committee. This is not, to my mind, the time for a public hearing. That would be after a formal presentation. Now, is, am I correct on that or please? I, I think we're not talking about hearings, Dorothy. We're just trying to, I think Alyssa would like to know, would really like to have and should have some kind of written materials in advance of, of our presentation. And, and she's well, asking Was she that. talking about in her share pack or was she talking posted uh, to, for the public? Because well, earlier it, it, today, uh, uh, can I tell you what I'm thinking? Yes. It's because yes. open meeting law is our issue right. here, Dorothy. Right. Yes. You're going to be presenting what you think is something we should do. You're going to be presenting that to a quorum of the committee. The only way you're allowed to do that is at a posted meeting. However, the way we've worked with this through both OCA and at the town council level is if you attach it to the meeting posting, which Athena knows how to do, meaning you'd have to have it done 48 hours in advance. You don't have to do it at the exact time. If she posts the meeting a week ahead, that's fine. But you need to have it as part of the meeting posting 48 hours in advance. That way, you don't have to worry about breaking open meeting law by sharing it with us, just like you can't email it to us normally because that's breaking open meeting law. But if the public can see it and the public can't see the share packet and the public doesn't know it's in the other packet unless we put that little link there like Athena's been putting on the town council postings that say, here's the information, go to right. that. Right, right. But we and didn't do that with town council, town manager appointments, or did we? He has already posted that information with the town council and prior to the town council meeting, our recommendations do need to have that 48 hour posting. And that means SharePoint's not even part of the conversation. That means that the posting, not the packet, but the posting has to either include the document or send you to a packet that has it in it. Yeah, you know, I follow so many meetings and this is not done. Thank you, Alyssa. Well, well we're, going, we're going to do it because we're supposed to do it. Okay, at the okay. <laughs> hey, right. um, did, did um, Alyssa suggest that the town manager <laughs> has some kind of announcement for us? 
just so that you wouldn't listen to anything I said because I said that first. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the bonus that he's going to offer us for our hard work. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Great. Yeah. It's about UMass. I, ah. I see something. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not about combat pay for you guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so the chancellor has uh, announced that the uh, university is making a significant change in their plans for the fall. I haven't digested the entire thing, but you all have it in your inbox. Uh, he says, while we remain committed to our previously announced instructional plan, regrettably, we are reversing our previously announced offer to provide on-campus housing for students whose coursework is entirely remote. Only students who are enrolled in essential face-to-face -face classes, including laboratory, studio, and capstone courses, which have been designated INSPIRE, will be accommodated in campus residence halls and be granted access to campus facilities and dining this fall. All other students whose courses do not require a physical presence on campus should plan to engage in their studies remotely from home. In the interest of public health, we are also strongly urge our off-campus students whose coursework is remote to refrain from returning to the Amherst area for the fall semester, for they too will not have campus facilities at their disposal. Research laboratories wow. of which resumed operation in the spring will remain open. Um, okay. Wow, is that gonna destroy our downtown fall? Um, so I think, um, he says, I, I realize that today's announcement will cause disruption for many of you and is a major departure from the plan we released in June. Our intention at this time, at that time with our, <clears throat> with our plans to conduct most classes remotely while inviting all students back to campus was to strike a balance between the immersive residential experience so important to our students development and the health and safety of the entire mm -hmm. community in the Amherst area. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts and detailed planning, the proliferation of the pandemic has left us no choice but to pursue this right. more urgent approach. Um, our, deliberations were, our deliberations were also informed by the health and safety concerns expressed by our faculty and staff, and by the citizens and leadership in our host community, Amherst. In addition, we determined that the risk of a mid-semester closing of the campus is real, and that making the decision not to bring students back to campus is preferable to sending everyone mm -hmm. home at the event in the event of an outbreak uncontrolled outbreak. There's more so you can read it at your leisure. Yeah, wow. okay, okay. okay. Oh, that's, that's, I guess it's, it's the fear of students coming from all over the country. It, I think that must be the main thing when we think that the COVID's all over the place now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very, that's huge. Thank you for sharing that. Um, all right, I think we're done. Um, uh, let me just check and make sure that Art doesn't wanna have a public comment. I think Art has fled. He's or retired. Oh, fled is a strong word. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. Probably Because I was going to offer him an order of merit if he was still here. I, I'm just I, hoping Emily doesn't flee after this meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Well, I warned, I warned her, but she didn't flee. I'm her. still here. <laughs> hey, I could use a pillow. Thank That's you. Right. <laughs> you need any advice? No. Thank you, Emily. Does that mean that Art missed this huge announcement? Apparently, oh, yes. It's in the press. Oh, it's in the press. Yeah, yeah, maybe I got an email. Um, <laughs> um, all, right. Yeah. all right. So um, I declare this meeting adjourned at 8.47. Yeah. Thank you, folks. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank Good night, Paul. you. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Good night.